Well, hello, hail, and welcome everyone to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Presented to you, brought to you by Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I am your host. Hail and thank you all for your support. All my listeners uh, that are listening on the podcast, all of my uh, YouTube channel members who are watching the video version of this. If you guys and gals out here that are listening want to kind of get in on the, the uh, visual aspect of this, please check the show notes for how you can become a member of Midgard Musings on YouTube and get the uh, video version of these podcasts. With that being said, before we get into the today's podcast, with that being said, I do want to say I apologize for missing the last month's, um, you know, live YouTube uh, members only chat. As you can all tell um, from some of my content, on the various platforms, I, I alluded to it in the last uh, podcast episode about you know just the things that I've been dealing with on, on you know on on a, on a personal level. Um, it it, it kind of consumed my life, and um, again, I apologize for missing the, uh, the 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 monthly live stream that we do for for members here on this. Uh, for, you know, for for those that that pledge or that, 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 uh, become members of the channel at that level do apologize for that, um, for missing it. Um, trying to get back into that cadence of things, trying to reestablish a more regular, uh, cadence of things, but, um, I'm here doing another podcast here before, um, going on vacation next week. Got some really cool things to talk about on the podcast today, uh, with regards to that. And we're also going to be um, responding, or I'm going to be, you know, responding to a, uh, a listener who, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Anonymously, Anon anonymously, anonymously, that's not unanimously. It was, it was anonymous because <laughs> I don't know who sent this uh, voicemail. I don't know who called in, um, but we're going to listen to that here in just a second. So um, let's go ahead and uh break through the silence as it were and get into today's subject so here we go All right. So hail and again, thank you all for uh, tuning in again and, and, and listening to today's podcast, Random Heathen Ramblings. Um, for anybody who's new listening to the podcasts, um, check the show notes for the Linktree link and, uh, to, that, that, that includes all the ways that you can support what I do here um, on this podcast. Um, not just on the podcast, um, but on the YouTube channel, on all my social media, which you know you can Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, those are the, I, and I don't even really like monitor the Instagram thing. It's, I, I share stuff there um, somewhat regularly, but Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, of course, Patreon, um, all that kind of fun stuff. So check the show notes, guys that are watching that uh, are members of the channel. Please check the description area. You guys know the drill. Support Midgard Musings in whatever way you are comfortable um, doing listening, watching, sharing, commenting, um, calling in, right? Uh, like I said before the intro, we're going to be listening to uh, um, somebody that called in and had a really good question, I think, you know. Um, but uh, six seven, oh, sorry, it's uh, six one five six seven one nine eight three two. That is the Midgard Musings hotline. Um, for the podcast listeners, if you are on, you know, Spotify, if you're on Anchor, um, probably on, on, on a lot of the other platforms, um, wherever you're listening from, um, at least the first two I mentioned, Anchor and Spotify, you guys have a, an option, right, to send like a quick, like minute long voice clip, um, just to like check in, say hi, that, that, that really helps show your support. You can be featured on the podcast. Um, anybody that calls in that wants to be featured on the podcast, um, for, for, for a duration of longer than a minute, if you have a topic that you want to, you know, 
um, have featured on the podcast. Again, that number is 615-671-9832. Your standard data rates will apply wherever you're calling from. So it is a domestic U.S. number. It's actually a Google Voice number. So um, that, that should hopefully help. 615-671-9832. Go ahead and call into uh, the podcast and let me know what's on your mind, what you want to talk about today. Um, but before we get into the um, discussion or, or, or before we get into talking about um, the message that I got uh, from this anonymous um, individual, wanted to talk about uh, the upcoming um, traveling that I'm going to be doing with uh, myself and my wife. We're going to be heading out of state next week on a vacation. Now, for those of you that are uh, let me say veterans of the podcast or veterans of Midgard Musings. Those of you who know me um, know that I am a New York native, New York State native. I'm from New York. Um, all of my family lives, um, I say all, but like my parents, my, my sister, my brother-in-law, my immediate family uh, still live in New York State. I have some cousins and other um, uncles and aunts and stuff that live uh, in the South, in North Carolina who we haven't really spoken and talked to in, in many, many, many years. Um, but my immediate family, the people who I've, you know, maintained a lot of uh, connections with over the years uh, live where I'm from. And um, normally every year, we, uh, my wife and I, um, will go to spend some vacation time up in New York, visit family up there. And... Um, you know, last year was a, was, a, was a really awesome time. I just want to say, you know, last year, um, <clears throat> I might annotate uh, in the show notes and down in the description for those that are watching. Uh, check the show notes, check the description um, for what happened around this time last year. A lot of, a lot of good things happened last year, and I, and I actually uploaded some content that um, points to that and reflects that because there was a lot of important things that needed to be dealt with and that needed to be handled. And, you know, being a part of that was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was really, really, um, beneficial to my hearth, uh, to my luck, to my Orlog. Um, and I felt like it was good for the luck and the Orlog of, of those who are not heathen, but that just, you know, it benefited those nearest and dearest to me at the time. Um, my, my, my kin, my, my kith, those, that, those extended family members, as it were. Um, a lot can change in, 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 in a year. A lot can change in a short period of time. But as um, some of you that may be following what I uh, do on social media know, um, a lot has changed. So my wife and I are not going to New York this year. Um, and instead, our vacation time will be spent uh, in the South. But we are going somewhere that uh, my wife has never been. I'm going to be meeting some folks um, who we've never met in person. Um, so next week, um, we're going to be heading west to Texas. And... Uh, Really excited about that because the region of Texas that we're going to is East Texas. So, you know, uh, we are heading west and stopping in East Texas. So there's a bit of a it's kind of a weird thing there. We're going we're going west and we're stopping east. But yeah, we're going west to East Texas, <laughs> um, Tyler, Texas specifically. For those of you that are listening and watching, you may know uh, a very uh, I want to say influential person in the heathen community, um, Eric Wordweaver Shervin out there in East Texas in the Tyler, Texas area. Going to be meeting Eric in person for the first time ever. Um, I, 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 you know, Eric and I have collaborated on uh, several videos. Um, has been featured um, on the channel here uh, several times, like I said. Um, over the years, uh, we've developed a, a friendship long distance, and I'm really excited to say that we are going to be meeting in person for the first time. 
Um, going to be spending some time in the Tyler area. My wife and I want to check out the Dallas, Texas area or scene, whatever. Um, our time in Texas is going to be very, very short because the rest of our um, time away or vacation time, I don't think sabbatical is the right term here, but we're, we're, we're going to Texas for a, a long weekend and then we're coming back from Texas, back to Tennessee, and then we're going to be spending more time in East Tennessee in the mountains uh, of Tennessee. We've rented a cabin um, and we just want to get away. We just want to get away. We want to like spend some time to, with each other, um, just ourselves and just, you know, enjoy vacation. Um, but really excited about the, the Texas um, stay because when we arrive in Texas next week, um, we're going to be seeing some of the local attractions, the local scene there in Tyler, um, and then the East Texas Heathen Park Moot, um, which is taking place um, in Tyler at a park um, on Saturday, July 24th. Be there for that. And there may, okay, can't say for sure. Um, I got I got some conversations to 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 have with a certain someone, right? But uh, perhaps maybe there will be something out here on the interwebs, on the internet, whether it be a podcast, whether it be a YouTube video, whatever, um, with Eric and I, right? So the um, the Godi of the Hridgar folk and uh, the the chieftain of the Hridhi folk. Uh, Midgard music myself, you know, maybe something that you guys see in person for the very first time in history. It's historical. It's really historical. And I feel like it's, a, it's, it's, it's the things of, you know, um, Eric talks a lot about this, you know, about how we live in saga times and that the things that are happening now and today um, are, are, you know, subject matter that um, is, is what becomes sagas later on down the road. And I feel that the, uh, the, you know, the involvement that Eric and I have had over the years since I launched Midgard Music, because um, as I recall, like one of the one of the first heathen YouTube channels that I came across shortly after launching Midgard Musings was Eric's channel, uh, The Raven's Call, um, which will, again, be um, down in the description and in the show notes of this podcast. So check him out. Uh, Cause he also does a podcast. He has, he, a lot of his, uh, last I checked uh, his content that he puts on, on his channel is also released in podcast form. So again, check the show notes, check the description, follow Eric, support him um, in that sort of way as well. Um, but again, one of the first heathen channels that I came across after shortly after launching my channel in uh, 2019 was Eric's channel. Um, and we developed a friendship. Uh, over over the last several years, um, talk about a lot of different things, um, not always heathen related, but um, and he's a very busy man, as as you can probably tell if you guys you know follow his um, channel and 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 know over the years what he's regularly been doing and what he's doing here lately. Um, very busy man, but but very committed and and a wellspring. Is that even the right term? A wealth of knowledge, you know, like the, 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 the amount of information, um, that you can glean from his knowledge is, is it's, it's very helpful. I find, um, it, I, I feel like it has helped me in my approach to heathenry over the years as well, um, because he's been doing it pretty much his whole life. You know, he's, he's, that's just what he is, who he is. Um, a lot of, us, of a lot of us out here may be listening and watching folks like myself that came into heathenry from another religious practice or another worldview, um, finding our way in this path, as it, as it were, finding, you know, finding our way or making our way, um, look for guidance and look for uh, information. And Eric was one of the ones that in, in you know, my early days and in my infancy of, of, of heathenry helped me. So I'm really excited to to be a part of um, the East Texas Heathen Park Moot next Saturday, July 24th. Um, for any of my listeners and and viewers out here that are in the East Texas region, I would highly encourage you to make the commute because I'm coming from Tennessee and driving with my wife ten plus hours or, or so to East Texas to 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 attend this thing. 
So round up your change, you know, cash in your bottles, do whatever it is you got to do and come out to the East Texas Heathens Park Moot. All the details will be down in the description of this video if you're watching and in the show notes of the podcast if you're listening. So um, for all the East Te Texas Heathen folks out there, looking forward to meeting you in person at the uh, Park Moot on Saturday, July 24th. So that's a big announcement. That's a big, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Unfortunately, man, it's not even unfortunate. It's just we're, we have a limited time in East Texas. You know, like I said, we're going to be going there to Tyler. We're going to be heading up to Dallas, my wife and I, um, thereafter. So we're really only going to be in Tyler um, for, you know, we're arriving late Thursday night. We're, we're going to be, like I said, checking out the local scene, seeing a few local attractions on Friday. Um, heading up to the park moot and spending time with Eric and those folks on Saturday. And then um, before the end of the day, Saturday, we're, we're leaving the Tyler area and we're heading up to Dallas. Um, we're going to be spending, you know, Sunday uh, in Dallas, checking out a lot of things and then leaving on Monday. So that way we can um, resume our vacation time in East Tennessee. So you guys know, loosely the curriculum the not the curriculum this is this isn't school <laughs> the itinerary the itinerary is the right word that i'm looking for you guys loosely know the itinerary now um so maybe for those that are listening and watching if you're in the area and you want to you know make an effort please uh to meet up or whatever it would be great to meet folks and and you know all that kind of fun stuff so that is where things are going um, on that front. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Um, I haven't had a you know a vacation, um, an extended vacation. I've I, you know taken a day off, had you know like holiday weekends or whatever. Um, but 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 this one coming up, it's going to be a week and a half of time away from work and, and, and stuff like that and meet, meeting folks and, and getting to, to um, see parts of the country that I haven't seen in a very long time. And, and my wife, for instance, has, has never even been to Texas. So it's, it's fun and, it, and it's exciting and I'm looking forward to it. So I uh, want to take as much of a, a, an advantage um, of this thing as, as we possibly can. So I hope that we can, you know, meet folks along the way and maybe, uh, you know, establish some new friendships and things like of that nature. So, um, all right, cool. So with that being said, um, there is, let me find it. There is, I mentioned at the uh, beginning of the podcast, mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that there's, uh, we got a, we got a anonymous is the right word I'm looking for, not unanimous anonymous that's not even a word um anonymous uh person listening in and i gotta i want to i want to play this and i want to answer some things along the way as we go so um whoever you are I get my headset so i can listen to this whoever you are um that uh, that that called in and, and said what they said i want to i want to say thank you um Anybody can remain anonymous when they call in, you know, names are, uh, you know, concealed to protect the, the guilty or the innocent or whatever. Um, you don't have to, to, to name who you are. You can remain anonymous. Um, that's 100% totally cool. Fine. No problem. Um, so let's listen to this um voicemail who uh called in the other day and and said what they said so here we go uh forgiveness for probably an awkward first time but i just had to say thank you for your recent uh podcast about the darkness it spoke a lot to me i recently had a huge schism in the uh real quick um let me just uh, switch gears here. So the recent podcast that I did about, you know, 
I'm going to, I'm going to annotate it um, down in the comments of the, of the video or in the, the description of the video version of this podcast, but check it in the show notes of, of what um, he's talking about here. Um, that, that, that podcast episode. So first of all, thank you very much for um, calling in um, whoever you are. <laughs> I hate to, to be like you, the mysterious one, um, whoever you are that called in. Um, thank you for acknowledging. Um, so here we go. You know, so the, uh, hold on. I don't even think I'm sharing right now. I don't think I'm sharing. I'm not sharing. Wow. What an awful, what an awful thing. Um, let me back up just a second. Let me, let me get this back up and running. What a horrible thing here. Let's see here. Where are we at? My connection to the gods, my connection a lot to me. I recently had a huge schism okay. in the uh, kindred I'd helped founded. Okay. All right. So sorry for that. Um, he, he thanking thanking you, the list, uh, the, the 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 person calling in again. I don't know your name, but thank you for calling in. Huge schism in the in, in a kindred. All right. Let's 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 listen to the rest of it. I'm sitting. I'm over here listening, and you guys aren't even listening. My apologies. Here we go. And I felt like I'd almost lost my connection to the gods, my connection to my ancestors, I felt empty on the inside. It's only been these last maybe, maybe months that I've really started to push myself back into reading runes, into remembering the tales and pushing my spirit, my (laughs) pogar or whatever, out into the verse again and attempting to really contact the gods again. And it's felt amazing. That's interesting. Um, let me pause just for a moment and and say that um, you know you mentioned schisms. That's an interesting word to use. Schism uh, is I, I think it has an origin in Greek. Um, matter of fact, while we're here, let's look it up. A schism is a split or division between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by differences in opinions or belief. Um, Etymologically speaking, it is a Greek word, which means cleft or division. So I'm used to this word, uh, you know, because of... uh, my, my background in Christianity. Um, so I understand this, this meaning and what, what you're talking about here and how that can affect your views of the world and, and your views of, of life in general. You know, you, you mentioned um, feeling a disconnect between the gods and your ancestors and that, uh, you know, recently getting back into, you know, divination, whether it be reading runes and you mentioned your Holger, uh, part of yourself getting back out there into the, the realms of the sacred, all very interesting stuff. So um, definitely appreciate the, uh, you know, the insight on that. So let's, let's uh, resume the, the voicemail. I have my first child coming, my first son, and I look forward to doing a naming ceremony and teaching him about the ways of honor and first and kindred, but it's, Congratulations also, by the way, just br- real briefly, you know, congratulations on the birth of your, of your, uh, of your first son, your first child. That is a huge thing to celebrate um, and to be proud of. So congratulations. It's been really tough after this kindred left. So I guess the main point of this would be a question. Within a kindred, do you think there should be extremely strict rules of leadership and how things are kind of handled? Or should it be far more laissez-faire? Of course, every human is so different. This question might be unusable, but... Mm. regardless of all that thank you so much for that last podcast it has really opened my eyes to remember the darkness has taught me a lot to remember those teachings and to look forward to the light so thank Mm. you so much Uh, thank you man i look forward to your next podcast uh and i look forward to 
listening to it and interacting with you live again like I usually do. So thank you so awesome. much. Uh, hail and have an amazing day. Well, hail and, and, and have an amazing day uh, also to you, you know. Um, some some really interesting things uh, that you brought up here um, that I that I am glad to hear asked um, or talked about. You know, um, the question about should there be a strict structure of leadership within a kindred or within a tribe? You know, so. Over the over over the years um, of of me growing as a heathen, I've I've quite often used the term kindred and tribe interchangeably. I think the kindred uh, terminology uh, may get some, you know, I don't know what the right word is, but uh, correlation might be the right word, but you know. Uh, to, to to more Christian approaches to things, but uh, I don't want to really get into that like dichotomy of, of 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 things. I think kindred and tribe can be interchangeable because they essentially, at the heart of it or at the root of it, mean the same thing. Uh, whether you want to call it a tribe, whether you want to call it a kindred, um, whether you want to call it a you know if if you're uh, a Thadish, you know, a Thade, you know, whatever the collective, whatever the group is. Um, your question that you ask about, you know, should should a kindred have a strict structure or a strict, you know, yeah, strict establishment structure or whatever of leadership, um, or should it be a bit more, uh, you, you use the term laissez-faire, uh, relaxed or whatever. I want to just go on record as saying like, you know, Every group, every how a tribe is run and how a tribe or a kindred is, um, you know, established, maintained, run, ruled, however, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's, it, there is no, I don't think there's any like 100% certain answer to this. However, my opinion, my answer to your question is should a tribe, should a kindred um, have a strict structure of leadership? Um, my answer is unequivocally yes. Now, with that being said, there's a fine line to understand and to and to know and to and to establish uh, that leadership is 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 important in any sort of structural group, any sort of you know whether it's a tribe or or a kindred or 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 a uh, a business unit or whatever, or anything like that. There has to be positions of leadership established, positions of, of ruling established to maintain the integrity of that collective. And those who have been proven worthy and who have proved their worth to um, serve their tribe, kindred, whatever, in that capacity, um, Again, it's it's you got to understand why. The, I I think it's important to understand the why of it all. You know, to understand like it's not that you do it just because that's the thing to do. It's there's there's a reason why we do it. There's there you know the 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 intent, the reason why behind it. Um, if you're all just you know fluffy bunny willy-nilly acting all just everybody do what you feel is right and everybody feels good in their heart and, and is you know whatever you feel drawn to do in your heart of hearts is right or whatever like that's not heathenry that's not true heathenry it's something else and and whatever that other thing is whatever that other whatever the something else is is not inherently bad but it's not heathenry there has to be structure there has to be order you look at the um, establishment of order uh, as defined in a lot of the, the lore. You know, you refer to getting back into things pertaining to the lore, the tales, um, the stories of the gods and things like that. The Aesir um, are 
the epitome of, of order and structure. Um, and they have a hierarchy. Uh, you know, you have Odin as the chieftain and, and you know, um, everything on down through the line, how the gods exist, how the sacred exists, how the divine exists. And I feel like the model of heathenry, historical heathenry, you know, actual uh, from, from, from these, you know, Germanic regions emulates or tries to emulate the, 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 the societal structure that the gods existed under or perhaps in the opposite perhaps it was the fact that that's how society worked at the time and that's how they perceived the sacred to exist um however you approach it structure order hierarchy is pivotal it's 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 it is definitely it definitely has a place so when it comes to kindreds when it comes to tribes when it comes to establishing all that um, yes, there has to be structure. Yes, there has to be an order. Yes, there has to be a um, there has to be leadership. There has to be something set in place for rules, regulations, bylaws, whatever you want to call it. What those rules are and how that order is is maintained and established is um, maintained and done at the tribal level, right? There's no uh, orthodoxy to be argued. Um, on how that's to be done. I guess it, you know, you could say that there's orthodoxy um, when it, um, if you look at some of the, uh, I, I guess really just depending on how hardcore of a, of a reconstruction approach you want to take to heathenry. Um, but if it worked then, then it, then it should work now in, in that sort of sense. It was a different world at the time, um, you know, in, 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 in medieval Scandinavia and, and beforehand and you know, pre-Christian Scandinavia, all these types of things are taken into consideration when we talk about this sort of thing. Um, but again, there's a fine line between leadership and dictatorship because the problem that I see nowadays is you give someone an inch, they'll take a mile. You give them any sort of leadership, authority, role, whatever, and then all of a sudden they be, they're like, well, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And they, they, they dictate, they, they don't, they try to, they, they, they take it and they run with it. Um, and it's, it's, I've, I've seen examples of this happening from an observe, like from an observation standpoint um, in, in, in tribes or in, in, in organizations outside of my own um, and my 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 tribe is very very close knit, very very small, and it, and it's um, it's it's that way for a reason. It's it's a very slow growing process. Like you look at how a tree grows, right? A pine tree of fifty years is going to be taller and 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 larger and and more impressive in stature. A pine tree of fifty years is going to look like larger and, and, and more impressive than an oak tree of 50 years because an oak tree takes its growth extends longer you know the pine tree grows fast grows up large and grows grows fast the oak uh will last longer but it takes a longer time to get to that maturity level so i feel like you know uh there's there there there's that dynamic to consider um but with uh, with regards to your question about um, you know struct, stru structure strict leadership roles, I I think that it is vitally important to establish those roles and to have that order established um, with the trusted and with the right individuals. Now, you know, you talk about betrayal and you talk about um, schisms that happen within a kindred. Like I've I've observed it happening even recently. I've I've felt um, betrayal and I felt schisms within uh, my own family unit. Um, going back to the early parts of the podcast of um, why I'm not going to New York this year and why I'm going to Texas instead and and East Tennessee and um, that sort of thing. You know those. Um, when you say schisms, those divisions, those things that, that, that rise up in a collective that can sunder ties, that can break webs, that can, you know, stir the waters in the well, as it were. 
it's a very real thing. Um, and you take that chance, you know, you, you take that um, risk when you get involved at that level. I don't think it should be anything that is, uh, you know, that, that, that should discourage us from continuing on or, main, or, or pursuing, um, you know, building a tribe or, or reestablishing tribal or kindred um, ties and connections and things like that. But it's, it's, it's definitely a, uh, it, it's a thing, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's definitely a thing. Um, and it can be discouraging and be very challenging and disheartening um, to, 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 to deal with. Um, but I think that when we have structure and when we have order and when we have established those roles, um, the challenges that arise are much more easily dealt with because of the fact that structure and order has been set up from the beginning. Um, knowing what I know and learning what I've learned over the years is that you cannot force the growth of a tribe. You cannot force the formation of tribe. Tribe has to grow organically. Tribe, has, tribe kindred, whatever, has to build organically from what is already established. You know, you can't force it. And kindreds, tribes are extensions of family. Family being kin. So tribe and all that is, is kin and kith. You know, you can have members of the tribe that are your kin, um, and you can have members of the tribe that are not kin, that are kith, that are the extended family members um, th through either oath, through, through um, you know, such things as marriage, or through such things as um, frith. You know, you, you mentioned it in your, your um, message that you, that you called in and left, you talking about, you know, frith and, and that sort of thing. Um, Frith carries with it trust and obligation. It's, it's, it's encompassing in that term. It's not just peace, um, you know, and, and understanding and a sort of, you know, there, there's, there's a trust relation. There's a, there's a mutual obligation in, uh, implicit uh, within that term frith and within what frith actually means. So it's, a, it's, it's very, com it, it's complex, but it's, 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 uh, it's simplistic at its, I think at its core, it's, it's how a society, it's how a um, tribe successfully is maintained and run. And if you try to force that in kindred or tribes, then it's going to break apart easily. Those schisms and things will arise and break apart the thing that you wanted to build and, and, and try to, you know, um, maintain and, and or, or not just maintain, but but the 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 build or whatever. So it's it's a it can be challenging, but I think if if we if we slow down and if we you know look at it as you know the 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 kindred the tribe has to develop organically. Um, once that begins to happen, then yes, structure needs to be there. There has to be a um, rules set in place. There has to be that leadership uh, presence. So maybe the response, maybe the answer was a bit long and drawn out, but I felt that it was worth taking the time to um, address in that matter. So for anyone you know listening, watching, um, whatever your thoughts are, I would invite you to please share those whether you want to you know comment down below in the video if you're watching if you're listening to the podcast and you want to share your thoughts through a voice message through whatever podcast platform that you're listening on whether it's anchor spotify google podcast apple podcast whatever um then i invite you to do so and if you want to elaborate a bit more and you want to share your thoughts then call into the hotline 615-671 9832. All right. Um, so as we wrap the podcast up, not keeping track of time or anything like that. Um, but that's today's subject. That's what I wanted to do. And I, I want to thank you, um, the anonymous caller, who, first of all, um, not awkward or 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 whatever you said that you said, you know, first time calling in. It wasn't awkward at all. Um, I appreciate 
you calling in and, and sharing your thoughts about this. Um, and would encourage everybody and anybody that wants to do that to please feel free. You know, you don't have to um, name your name or say who you are, or if you want to use a moniker, uh, you know, an, uh, anything just doesn't matter. Love to share your thoughts about it. So as we wrap the podcast up on random heathen ramblings, be sure to please support the podcast in any way that you can a follow a like a thumbs up whatever you can upvote podcast you can you know whatever it is um please do that share them around as well there's a lot of people listening that are on various social media platforms so retweet it share it on your facebook share it on your instagram whatever it is that you are able to do getting the word out there means a whole lot and and i want to say thank everybody for doing that so as we wrap the podcast up um normally we go through a uh, random stanza from the Havamal um, and talk about the interesting, you know, the, 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 the varying translations of um, authors, you know, how, you know, whether it's the Auden and Taylor, whether it's the Hollander, whether it's Bray, whether it's Jackson Crawford, whatever. Um, so today's random stanza um, is stanza 62. We got Auden and Taylor, we've got Bellows, Bray, Hollander, Terry Thorpe and, and uh, Crawford that we're going to be or that I'm going to be reading to you from and, and offering some insight on. So we'll start with Auden and Taylor. Uh, stanza 62 of the Havamal Auden and Taylor translation reads, as the eagle who comes to the ocean shore sniffs and hangs her head, dumbfounded is he who finds at the thing no supporters to plead his case. Bellows' translation reads, when the eagle comes to the ancient sea, he snaps and hangs his head. So is a man in the midst of a throng who few to speak for him finds. Uh, Bray is like an eagle swooping over old ocean, snatching after his prey. So comes a man into court who finds there are few to defend his case. The Hollander translation reads, with lowered head sweeps to the sea when he comes, the eagle or the billowing brine. Thus ache the man whom a throng who finds him but few to befriend him. Uh, the Terry translation reads, sniffing and searching over the sea, the eagle watches the waves. He's like the man who comes among many, but has few friends. Got two left. We got Thorpe and Crawford. So Thorpe reads, inquire and in part should every man of sense who will be accounted sage. Let one only know a second may not if three all the world knows. Now, the Thorpe translation is probably off uh, numerically in the uh, sequential order of, of, of the stanzas, which is common. Um, you know, we, we, we see translations kind of uh, where stanza lies, like it, it kind of depends on the translation. Uh, so finally, the, the, the Jackson Crawford uh, translation reads that, um, a hungry eagle snaps his beak and stretches out his neck when the sea comes into night or into sight. People get the same look about them when they walk among strangers and have no one to speak well of them. Now, this is an interesting stanza, right? What we're basically hearing about here is that, you know, a man without um supporters is uh or, or you know uh, an individual that has no support is compared to an eagle who would swoop down to catch their prey to catch a fish whatever um only to see that it disappears that it's you know they they, they, they swoop down and then boom nothing they got they got nothing um and i think it's important to um consider that we shouldn't always wait until we get to a gathering or, or we don't we shouldn't 
be reactive, we should be proactive, right? Don't wait until you get to court. Don't wait till you get to the gathering of whatever to form your alliances, to build your case, to, to you know, whatever. Like, don't be reactive. Like, have enough foresight to, to, to know what it is you're getting into and how to react to it before you get there. Because you, know, you got to think about how the when the stanzas were written in the hall of them all the 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 time frame uh historically you know the viking age uh of history you know you got to look at it that from from that perspective too i think you got to kind of take it all into context because a lot of that lifestyle back then was it, it circulated around um things like gift giving hospitality reciprocal reciprocation um you know, because you never knew when you might need an ally. You never knew, right? Like I gotta go from point A to point B and it's you know shitty weather or whatever. And I gotta stay somewhere with somebody um to o o overnight or whatever. Um and hold on just a second. But, uh, you know, so you, you had to have your ducks in a row. You had to have those alliances established um, because things could happen and break open over relatively small disagreements. You know what I mean? Like everything stood on a thread. You know, it was there was a lots of there were there were lots of straws that broke camels backs in those days. You know, it could just be a small disagreement, a small misunderstanding or whatever. Next thing you know, it's it's a whole feud. That's been established. Um, you know, look at it kind of like in this way. It's not, it's not always what you say, but or it's not what you, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, it's not what you know, but who you know. Um, all these kinds of things. So, you know, random, random hall of them all ramblings, random heathen ramblings, today's podcast um is um uh, there's that stanza 62 so i want to hear what you guys think down in the comments of the video if you're watching this call uh the hotline 615-671-9832 share your thoughts i'd love to hear what your thoughts are so that way we can talk about it and enhance it expound upon it get some dialogue built around it on the next random heathen uh, ramblings podcast um, that'll be coming out might be recording something for the podcast uh, to be out next week before we head on vacation i'm gonna try to have something out for all of you uh, out here listening and watching before we head out um, and we may right can't say for sure but we may have something in line with eric shervin at the ravens call we shall see i have a call uh, lined up with him uh, here relatively soon to talk about some some things so would definitely love to film some content uh, with him if time does allow so hopefully time will allow um, but for all of you out there please uh, you know stay safe if you're in the east texas area next week saturday july 24th and you're in the tyler area you want to travel a bit i'll be there my wife will be there um, for the East Texas Heathens Park Moot. Definitely looking forward to meeting some people, um, meeting Eric, of course. It's going to be awesome. So hail to you all. Hail to you all for listening. Thank you so much for your support. Again, check the show notes. Check the description down below if you're watching this. Um, for all of my YouTube members, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. Um, we'll get back into a cadence of you know live streams for the members only here soon. Uh, just a lot been going on. Um, personally on this end to, that I've had to, to maintain order in, <laughs> as it were. Um, so, and thank you again, Anonymous, for the voicemail, for, for calling in and asking that question. I hope that my response um, elicits some conversation and thoughts about it. So for all of you out here listening and watching, thank you so much. And until we talk again, hail, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.